Welcome to the Workbench and welcome to Wheels and Wings TV. Today, with many thanks to our good friends at Borgfell Canada, we've got our hands on an actual final production kit of Tamiya's brand new 148 scale Lockheed P38 Lightning. Let's have a look at it. This is a kit that could be built by all but probably the most novice of modelers to an acceptable finish out of the box. Um, your more advanced modelers, super detailers, great base that's going to go together quite well, going to get you to those super detailing areas. Definitely a good base, you're going to get through the main structures very quick, going to get to those more time intensive areas. Throw a little bit of aftermarket at it, dress those areas up. Now because Borgfeld like us so much, they sent us not one, but two of these new kits. Uh, one white box pre-production and of course this right off the assembly line full production kit. Now the pre-production kit as for contrast we have built up with some of the aftermarket upgrades that would definitely help this kit along a little bit. We've added some metal gun barrels from Master. Um, these install very well into the kit. You just got to cut off the molded in barrels. Uh, we've added some uh, pre-colored Edward photo etch seat belts. Because of the potential um, differences in wheel treads, we've gotten some resin wheels with the early style block tread. Um, these also have the uh, flat spot, which the Tamiya wheels don't have. Gives the impression of a little bit more weight as this was a big heavy aircraft. Um, these fit very well. Took a little bit of modification as I believe these wheels were designed for the earlier um, P38 kits from Hasegawa Academy. So it took a little bit of modification where the wheel axles mount in. But these three small, relatively inexpensive upgrades definitely uh, ramp up the detail level in this kit, even more so than it is already out of the box. Both kits are essentially identical. Uh, Pre-production kits from Tamiya are always done in the same light gray plastic. Other than that, not a scrap of difference between the two kits, aside from, obviously, color of the plastic and the full color box on the production kit as you would see on the shelf when it is released in November 2019. Looking at the sprues really closely, the way they've laid out parts, um, a lot of the parts lend themselves to clues that Tamiya is planning on doing an EJ or L variant of the P38. So maybe we will see a kit in the future from Tamiya with markings for Thomas McGuire and Richard Bong. We have the pre-production kit done up as the box art aircraft, Miss Virginia. Uh, this aircraft was involved with Operation Vengeance, which was a top secret mission flown by the U.S. Army Air Force in the Pacific in 1943 to shoot down Japanese Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, who was the mastermind behind the attack on Pearl Harbor. This pairs very well with Tamiya's 48 scale G4M Betty, as they came up with a special edition kit of that including figures for Admiral Yamamoto and his staff. If you are planning on doing a different aircraft, there are a few decal sheets available, um, not too many on these actual variants right now, um, but there's also a couple of good reference books. Uh, Osprey have four dedicated to various P-38s, uh, different theaters, different time periods. Um, I think there's even one dedicated to a particular fighter squadron in the Mediterranean. And those guys had very colorful aircraft with bright red noses and propellers. Uh, we are going to be building the F boxing this time as a restored museum example. To me, I include three large ball bearings in this kit for your nose weight so you don't have to run to the hardware store and buy some fishing weights. No chance of this thing sitting on its tail like you've had to do with other kits in the past. Instructions, as usual, well laid out, very clear, leave no guesswork. Parts engineering fits very well. If you have two identical parts, they're keyed so that you can't possibly mess them up. Although we used a little bit of Mr. Surfacer in a few spots, if you're very attentive to your assembly, it's quite possible you would need absolutely no filler on this kit. It fits that well, especially along the booms, the nose areas, and even some panels fit that look like they're molded in place. Um, truly impressive. Uh, wheel wells go together very well. Um, sides, floor, very nice big locating lugs, things locked together very securely, very square, uh, no visible seams, lots of piping and plumbing is included on the sprue so you don't have to add a lot of extra. Um, very good looking right out of the box, a lot of detail in there, 
hit that with a wash, it's going to pop right out, especially as these wheel wells on these early lightnings were all bare aluminum. The instrument panel in this kit, although simple, is rendered very well with a nice decal. Um, two different instrument panels depending on the F or the G kit with two corresponding decal sheets. With careful painting and detailing, this will be completely suitable and a photo etch part is not going to be needed, especially as the instrument panel is buried relatively deep in the cockpit, much like a Focke-Wulf 190. Not much can be seen once it's actually in there. Now, while we're also in the cockpit, it brings up one of our first little gripes with this kit, and that is the seat belts. Unlike Tamiya's recent 48 scale Mark I Spitfire, we don't get a photo etch fret in this kit, so no photo etch seat belts. Um, as it is with the decal, probably keep that to doing a closed canopy, as it will be really obvious. And before we join the upper and lower nose and wing sections, you're going to want to decide if any or which drop tanks you're going to want to use, as there are two options in this kit. Uh, there are several holes that do need to be opened up if you're going to be doing drop tanks. Um, we are going to be doing a museum restored example. This one does not even have the hard points fitted, so we're just going to skim over that part today. At this time, we're also going to be installing the gun barrels, which brings up our second gripe with this kit. Much like the seat belts, the gun barrels are rather basic and don't really fit with the high level of the rest of the kit. Um, these are just simple cylindrical pieces of plastic, don't have the very prominent perforated cooling jackets that were a characteristic of these early lightnings. Uh, the perforations are represented on the decal sheet, so you'd be painting the barrel and then adding these decals on. Um, now for the later lightnings, they had solid blast tubes over the gun barrels, much like a Hellcat or a P-47. Um, and looking at the kit, they will probably be doing the later variants as well. On those ones, simply drill out the muzzles and these barrels will be just fine. As it is, being all molded in one piece and installing from the back of the nose can make painting these neatly uh, difficult. Um, it would have been nice to see these perhaps molded as individual barrels to be installed at the end. Um, I know Tamiya can do this. They've done similar things with some of their new 50 cal machine guns in their armor kits. Um, the barrel is molded as a separate piece and slots in afterwards. Um, that would have been nice to see simply from a painting standpoint. Um, now we're going to grab one of these Molotow chrome pens. Now these are not just for car modelers. Um, this gives you a very, very nice shiny reflector in the landing lights. And if you're doing the G variant, it has the three um, identification lights on the lower part of the fuselage nose section. Um, chrome these up and then put your colored transparent paint on the lenses and you're going to catch the light very well. With thanks to our good friends at Borgfeld Canada, we've got another great kit of another classic Second World War fighter from one of the top manufacturers in the business.